This presentation is meant to help explain important information about the benefits, risks, side effects, and alternatives to laparoscopic gallbladder removal so that you can make an informed decision about whether or not to proceed with this operation. This process is known as informed consent. By now, you have already talked with your doctor about a possible problem with your gallbladder, which may be responsible for your current symptoms. The gallbladder is a storage pouch in the upper abdomen. It's attached to ducts that transport the digestive enzymes in bile from the liver to the intestine. These structures form the bile system. When patients have problems with their gallbladder, surgical removal is often recommended. Your surgery will be done in an operating room while you're completely asleep. It's usually done through small incisions with the help of a long lens. It's called a laparoscope. Sometimes a large incision next to the ribs on the upper right side of the abdomen is necessary. Your doctor may also recommend a special x-ray of your bile ducts called a cholangiogram that's performed during the operation. The length of the procedure can vary, but is often less than 90 minutes. In addition to your surgeon, an anesthesia provider, a surgical assistant, and several nurses and technicians will be present in the operating room. After the operation is completed, you will awake from anesthesia and be moved to the recovery room where staff members will monitor you closely. Most patients are allowed to go home the same day as their surgery, but some may need to stay in the hospital for one or more nights. There are many reasons your doctor might recommend gallbladder removal. These commonly include, but are not limited to, symptoms such as pain or nausea from gallstones, an infection or inflammation of the gallbladder called cholecystitis, abnormal gallbladder function, gallbladder polyps or tumors, and inflammation of the pancreas from gallstones. The benefits of the operation depend on your diagnosis. In the case of gallstones, the goal is to decrease pain and prevent the symptoms from getting worse. Patients who have pancreas inflammation from gallstones benefit from a decreased risk of recurrent episodes of inflammation. In the case of polyps or tumors, the main goal is to treat or eliminate cancer or a risk of cancer. Some conditions of the liver and bile system are not effectively treated with gallbladder removal. For example, doctors usually do not recommend gallbladder removal for gallstones that are not causing symptoms. Other conditions, such as cancer of the gallbladder, may require additional medical or surgical treatments. Laparoscopic gallbladder surgery, like gall procedures, has known risks. To make an informed decision about whether or not to proceed with the surgery, you need to understand what these risks are. Although all potential risks cannot be presented here, many can. One risk is injury to the bile ducts. Bile duct injuries occur in roughly 1 in 200 cases. In the event of a bile duct injury, a surgical repair is required. This usually involves a second operation through a large abdominal incision. A bile duct injury can result in a narrowing of the bile ducts and long-term bile duct and liver dysfunction. More than half of bile duct injuries are recognized after the initial operation has been completed. Sometimes a bile duct specialist will need to be consulted if the repair is complicated. Bile leaks are another risk. They can occur in up to 5 to 7 percent of patients. Often these require no further treatment. Occasionally, however, the leak will need to be treated with drain placement, a procedure called ERCP, or both. Significant bleeding is a rare risk but occurs occasionally and may require hospitalization, transfusion, and sometimes a return to the operating room to correct it. Injury to major blood vessels can also affect the ability of the liver to function normally. Retained gallstones that can cause jaundice are another risk. Gallstones can pass from the gallbladder into the bile ducts and become lodged there. Occasionally these stones are not detected until after surgery. Extraction of retained stones can sometimes be completed with a procedure called ERCP, but may require a return to the operating room. Infection is a risk and can occur in the abdomen, in the surgical incisions, or in other parts of the body despite using strict sterile technique and giving antibiotics before the operation begins. Development of an infection after surgery may require treatment with antibiotics and perhaps more procedures such as drain placement. Roughly 1 in 50 laparoscopic gallbladder surgeries gets converted to the large incision operation. This risk may increase in obese patients, patients with prior abdominal surgery, 
and patients with more severe gallbladder disease. Other risks associated with laparoscopic gallbladder surgery include hernia formation at the incision sites, inflamed pancreas, injury to bowel and liver, need for hospitalization, blood clot formation in deep veins in the lungs, cardiac complications such as heart attack, short and long-term disability, and very rarely even death. In addition, there is no guarantee that your symptoms will resolve completely. Certain pre-existing conditions or diagnoses may increase your risks of gallbladder surgery. These include, but are not limited to, obesity, tobacco abuse, previous abdominal surgery, severe gallbladder disease, liver diseases such as cirrhosis, chronic hepatitis, and fatty liver, a history of pancreatitis, pre-existing heart or lung disease, diabetes, and blood clotting disorders may also increase risk. Although many of these risks and potential complications are rare and easily managed, when they occur, they often require extra treatment, both medical and surgical, and can change and prolong your recovery plan significantly. These risks cannot be predicted or prevented by your surgeon. Gallbladder surgery requires the use of general anesthesia. During the operation, you are asleep and will feel no pain. Once you are asleep, a breathing tube is inserted through your mouth into your windpipe. The tube is removed at the end of the operation. Your anesthesia provider will remain with you the entire time you are under anesthesia and will see you safely to the recovery room. While general anesthesia is quite safe, it does have risks associated with it. These risks can include, but are not limited to, damage to vital organs such as the brain and heart, cardiac arrest, death, recall or memory of the surgery, awakening during surgery, an allergic or adverse reaction to medications used during surgery and your anesthesia, injury to the lips, teeth, throat, vocal cords or voice box, lungs or extremities and nerves, sore throat, nausea and vomiting, incomplete pain control, or the need for hospitalization. Some of these risks are quite rare, while other lesser risks can be more common. Long-term side effects of gallbladder removal are rare. Occasionally, patients will experience intolerance of high-fat foods, chronic abdominal pain, and changes in bowel function. It is not possible to predict or prevent these rare side effects. You can expect to experience some post-operative pain from the incisions. This will be treated with pain medicine prescribed by your doctor. Occasionally, patients will have minor nausea after surgery. Constipation for several days can also be a side effect. For most patients with gallbladder problems, surgical removal is the best choice. Most doctors perform this operation through small incisions. Another way to remove the gallbladder is through a large incision. Most studies that compare these two ways show a similar complication rate. The surgery through smaller incisions provides the benefit of shorter recovery and less pain. Alternatives to surgery also exist. Patients can choose no treatment at all, including any use of medications, testing, or procedures. Attempts have been made in the past to dissolve gallstones with bile salts and lithotripsy, but results are minimally successful at best. Pain management with medications and continued observation is an option, but may result in progression of symptoms and increased risk for future surgery. Sometimes antibiotic therapy and a drainage tube are used to treat acute inflammation of the gallbladder in high-risk patients who may not safely tolerate anesthesia or abdominal surgery because of other medical problems. If your gallbladder is removed through small incisions, you might be able to go home the same day as your surgery. Sometimes a stay in the hospital will be required. You will have some abdominal pain from your incisions that will slowly improve. You may also experience minor nausea. Anti-nausea medicine may be provided to help with this problem. Constipation is another common complaint after surgery. Your doctor may recommend fiber supplements and a laxative if this occurs. Often patients are doing well enough to return to work within two weeks of their surgery. Various aspects of your operation may affect your return to normal activity, so be sure to ask your doctor about this. If a large incision is used to remove your gallbladder, your recovery will take longer. You can expect to spend several days in the hospital. It may take four to six weeks before you can return to work and other normal activities. You may also experience more pain from the incision that requires you to take pain medicine for a longer period. If a complication occurs with your surgery, you will likely experience a longer recovery.
This presentation of the risks, benefits, side effects, and alternatives to laparoscopic gallbladder surgery is meant to help you make an informed decision about your potential operation. Please understand that the risks of this procedure cannot be completely predicted or prevented by your surgeon. It is impossible to foresee all possible conditions and situations that might result in a complication or need for further treatment. If you have any further questions, please direct them to your physician.